<laughs> okay. <laughs> Until we make money and get engineers, I have to edit all that out. Maybe. I don't know. It depends, man. We might like it because we tried to, we was talking earlier, <laughs> Youngblood and I, and remember you're talking to now and then, it's still Woody's Tapestry, uh, and we still be talking about things that's close to our heart, and we still try to get into a little something, something. But it's just with a different twist. And just like we was talking earlier, he and I was talking about the two different perspectives of joining and being in the military from his perspective as being, hold on for a second, let me get my glasses on. Because you get locked up around here if you ain't got your glasses on. You, you can go straight to jail. It's the law, man. I mean, now, and you know I'm a law-abiding citizen. I don't do nothing illegal, and I don't do nothing legal that's ill. Okay, there we go. Now, hey, hey, Bobby, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Come on, yeah. You, hey, how your wife doing? She okay? Yeah, I heard about that. Well, send her our love. Tell her I said hi. Any kid, anyway. Yeah, Bobby, old friend of mine. Me and him used to play in a blues band. No, we didn't. <laughs> no, we didn't. But we could have. I, I had friends named Bobby. Hey. But anyhow, get back to the military. <laughs> you know, what we discovered. It's hard not to feed into that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But you know, I, I didn't do that, so you know that mean click, 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 boy, that click, 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 that you know what that mean. But, but still, the thing is, man. Now you know, uh, me and him got on the same color pink, and mine's showing orange. And, and like, um, I seen fog and I seen rain. Ooh. Anyway, he said the reason he didn't go into the military because he wanted to go fight for another country. <laughs> okay. That is not the reason. The reason I told to you. To the French. Why? Well, the French the Reserve French or somebody. Why? I think that's what he was talking about. Well, I had, cause what he said, I don't know if no, it made no, a lot of yeah, sense I to an older I, cat I, like me. But okay, then let me let him explain. I what can't did you say? You know, we part of the Peaky Blinders. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. okay, we'll do that. Anyway, but um, I originally said it was only, it was for a couple of reasons. So, some some people when they get out of high school they want to go and join the military straight up. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Because they had that field and just want to fight for that. Country. Ain't got no money. That too. I no guess. education. I mean, but we just no place to stay, and they're getting ready to turn eighteen. Go ahead. I'm okay. just saying. I, I, Guess, See, back in the day, a kid turned eighteen. They was talking about leaving the house, but now a kid turned you can't you can't leave the house well, when you're eighteen. A kid turned eighteen and y'all age, they came and got y'all. What a war, didn't they? Yeah, didn't well, they that's draft true. Yeah, you know, they draft. They, well, you know, they was gonna draft me until they stopped drafting. <laughs> <laughs> well, after they stopped drafting, they quit drafting people. I wasn't. Well, I had already been in by then. But that's another story, what? man. What? Well, yeah. Oh By the time I figured out they had that they that they had closed the draft, I had already volunteered to go to go in so I wouldn't get drafted, and it worked because they didn't draft me. Well, I didn't get drafted. So what's wrong with that? Okay. Anyway, mm -hmm. so I went in the military and fought for the country because at the time when I went in. I was red, white, and blue in my mind. I didn't know no better. You know, um, I didn't know anything about, well, this country really don't have no interest in you at all. Country Nothing that you think about. Not not the way you sing in it, my head. You, yeah, they don't even care. Don't care. Don't and you know, that, and, the, and the disheartening thing is, is that we still have to live in this country and we still have to make it work. Yeah, you know, against all of the odds, but you know, God made us so that we could do that, and that's why we're able to triumph the way we have been and continue to do it. So, as far as the military is concerned, he was saying that he think that the patriotism is different. One of the things, and I don't know what he was saying. I, I told him to say, "What are you saying, man?" My camera's is fuzzy. Yeah, now it's fuzzy. Yeah, I don't know why that is. Yeah. It might need to be. Hold up. Let me activate it and deactivate it again. I told y'all what we was working with over here. 
you know, you ain't got no engineers over here. We have to do this stuff on our own. <laughs> Hopefully that'll bring it back to to its to its luster. Okay. Back to its luster. That would be cool. Mm-hmm. Um, now you said what, what was I saying right about um so as far as the patriotism of what does, that, country, what does that even mean? You know? To me? Yeah. Or just well, to me as far as what they say an American should be, I don't really buy into it because, as we know, it varies from different human being to human being. So I, I don't really have a real definition of what it should be or what it shouldn't be. Um, I just know if you're living in America, you should be an American. Um, I, I feel no other way. Others do. Well, you just want to keep it simple, but that's the way it should be. Mm-hmm, yeah. But see, people make it complicated so that they can get all kind of people. Because that's something get people all trapped up. Just like, for instance, the way that America expanded its territory when it first started, America was very small. But the Haitians, because of the the way that they went over and conquered the group of people that they did when they went over and kicked the Frenches and all that, that allowed for America to buy more land to create America that we know today. America was only a third the size that it is now until the Haitians fought the war and won, and then they allowed them to buy it, to buy that land. It put them in a position so that the people that was ahead of America at the time could buy the land. And that's how they ended up buying all that property, man. And so we don't understand how it is that the Haitians can't come into this country and live, but you let the Ukrainians come in this country and live. And not only let them come in here and live, you would bring them in this country and give them social security you come in this country, you give them uh, uh, child care. You, 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 I mean, I know some people now that's, that's Ukraine that's working in this country. And there's a lot of people that look like we couldn't get no job. That's what they were saying. Of course, you know, Trump, he made it better for us. He, you know, he set the jobs up to where everybody, all, all his African-Americans was working. So he said. But anyways, back to the whole thing about the patriotism. I never really understood what patriotic was supposed to mean because I never seen a good example of what it was. Because all of the people that would have been patriots, they call them other names. Like Martin Luther King, for instance, you know, that would have been a patriot. That's somebody that loved the country that he was in and he loved his people. And he wanted to see a change and wanted to see to where we all were treated and we all had the same rights and was able to live in this country the same and not be subjected to all of this craziness, man, this discrimination and all that stuff. Cause it doesn't make no sense because in the end you lose everything anyways, because you can't take anything with you. But you know, some people say, well, I play with it as long as I can. Yeah. And you'll be back to them slankies too. We ain't gonna get on that. But let me say this. If I had a choice to go into the military again, I think I would. But it would have to be under different circumstances. You know, I wouldn't just go in like all willy nilly like I did before. And I definitely wouldn't cut anything out of my life to go in, you know. I would have went through everything and, you know, graduated and went through the proper channels for that. But I wouldn't have jumped into it like I did. But I would have went. But I sure would have dealt. I would dealt a different hand. I sure would have dealt differently. Mm-hmm. But anyways, so what do y'all think? I mean, there's there's y'all out there that was in the military because I got a bunch of family that went to the military. Yeah, that is definitely true. That yeah, definitely I mean, you know, um, this this community where where we reside, man, it's not that big of a community, but it's big enough to give you a, an idea of how many people in this area actually are vets and military, you know, people in a, a great majority of them are family. family. And uh, yeah, you know, so it's kind of interesting to be in a place where that is happening too. Now, that is that is definitely true because I see someone, okay, so a lot of people here, mm-hmm. if you tell them, hey, Sir, I'm thankful for your service. I say, yeah, all right, that's cool. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> a bunch of people. Like, I mean, a, a bunch of bunch. Yeah, they just kind of be like, yeah, they whatever. Say, yeah, I did that. I did they, that. they say, yeah, I did that. You know, it's, I mean, it's no, no big deal. You know, I thank you, but, you know. Well, you, you know what? Well, I tell you, the reason that you get. Because I try not to take it like One this. of the reasons that you get that kind of a, a reaction is because of the way that veterans have been treated in this country. I mean, veterans have been treated really poorly considering what they give up for this country. Now, not all vets go to war, not all vets end up getting hurt, but man, a lot of them do, man, mentally, spiritually, mm -hmm. and physically. And I'm gonna tell you, man, they don't take care of these people. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I-, I Not I, the right way, no. Man, I'm gonna tell you, all the times I went to the vet, I mean, man, when I first started going back in the 70s, man, that was rough. I mean, because those people, I mean, it was like they was in the fifties, man. As really? far as technology, man, I'm serious. They were still, they were still back in the cave days, man. I mean, because and you know, they technology and like stuff was cha years. hadn't changed yet. It hadn't flipped. That's crazy. Because computers and stuff hadn't came into play, so it, it was mm. rough, man. Um, but it's even today, it's not as good as man, it should be. Records. And see, and that's why it, it's like some countries, you go in the military, like. For instance, like Switzerland, from what I understand, you go into their army or whatever military, you're in there for the rest of your life, but they take care of you forever. So, I mean, you know, this country, they put you in, you go in there, you serve your time, you go in there two or three years, five years, a war break out, bam, they don't care how many people they send, they don't care how long they send you, because they just want to prove the point. And them clowns that start these wars ain't never been in a damn war. See, we supposed to be funny, but see, you brought up something that wasn't that funny, and that's this whole thing about this patriotism mm -hmm. and joining our, the military. You know, um, why do you want to fight for a country that ain't fighting for you? Fighting for somebody that don't want to fight for you, government-owned property that they don't even care. That for Once you leave out of their vicinity, they don't care much else about you, really, unless they need you again for, like you said, a war that showed up. And now all of a sudden, like you said, they just throwing people, throwing people. Oh yeah, man. And, and you know, families, just like it's just like just just my daddy was telling me. He said, you know, um, after the white man that his that his dad worked for didn't like the fact that he didn't work the way he wanted to, so he signed him into the military. And this was back when he was in uh, World War II. But he did, and, and he ended up in Saipan. And what he now, this is my dad, and you know, so here you are. 19 years old, you know, done been kidnapped basically and put into the military against your will, but you can't say nothing because you're a black man and a white man signed the paper. Mm -hmm. So you in there and you make the best of it, but what he found out who the real enemy was the people that put him in the military. You know, so really you shooting at the wrong people. I pause for a second because some people need to understand that, you know, that's that has changed and and, and these younger people like y'all like young man here he ain't thinking like that he's like man i ain't trying to get shot at for you and then when i come back i can't get a job or i can't be an executive you know because you can't even live the way you really want to you can't anymore. you know no like all that sense of all your sense of innocence and and being a citizen of the state that's all gone you know you're now a, a warrior they have trained to strictly just even shoot at something or take cover and blow something up. Tell me this, y'all. What makes sense does it? To train an individual to go into a, a, a terrain that they don't know, kill people that they don't know, get them used to that, and then bring them back to their home and tell them to stop doing it and turn them loose on the civilians. Now, you don't know, people don't want to look at the statistics, and I guarantee you somebody have studied it. But if you look at when Vietnam came back, your drugs changed too, because a lot of that stuff was brought back during that time. Because a lot of those guys got hooked, got turned on, you know, being in another country. And a lot of that stuff followed them back here. And their habits, a lot of them when they came back. You yeah. made two good points, right? Mm -hmm. now. Those of y'all here that haven't seen these two particular movies, you need to go watch them.
Okay. Now, Major Payne started out letting you know that he's a one-man killing machine. He can kill anybody that you put in front of him. It don't matter who it is. To the point that he had killed every operative in his way and that was ever an enemy to anybody that has ever crossed him. Just for them to let him back into society, and he can't cope with it. He nope. has to get a job that's similar, and he becomes wants to become a police officer. Mm. Not only can he not become a police officer because of his PTSD, he was way too aggressive in his manner. Now, I'm not going to say that, but... But, you know, I'm... Uh, 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 those of y'all that know there's, an, know there's an example that was given to me about how you can break a man's spirit in his mind. And and it's like digging in a on a beach. You know how you go to a beach and you can dig in the sand and then when the water rush back, well, well the next day you come back, you won't even see evidence of that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's when you're dealing with parts of the human psyche. Okay? And now of course I don't know, I ain't studied this stuff. So only this is things that I think. When you want to destroy a man's will the way he really is so that he don't care and he will kill another human being, it's just like you going to a bunch of concrete, like in a, in a sidewalk or in the street, and you dig it up, and then you try to put it back together with the parts you done dug up. You can never get it to go back. Not perfect. Never get it to go back. Right. I don't care how you rearrange it. I don't okay. care how you set it. I don't care what you do with it. Once you have dug it up that particular part of the man's consciousness and got it disarrayed and all out of uh, discombobulated, you can never put that man that back. Now he can get better, you know, and and trust me, he can get somewhat better. I mean, because I suffer with some of that same stuff. But the thing is. You have to constantly be working on it, and you have to know that that's what you're working on. Mm -hmm. But, you know, people don't know, man. That's why he was telling me about military. He's like, man, he didn't want to have to, he, he didn't want to be subjected to that. He didn't want his mind broke down. And that's what they do in boot camp. Because mm, I, man, I. You know, a lot of people don't want to have to lose themselves yeah, to man, be reconstructed, to you, you know. Weak, this weak, developing person just so they can build you into this so called strong man. Yeah, that should have nothing to do with any of that at all. Well, if, if you just if you teaching discipline, you should be teaching discipline. You shouldn't be trying to teach people how to first of all traumatize themselves to to a point where they don't even know who they are anymore. Mm -hmm. So now I'm not. <laughs> so now I don't have a name. All I get is a number. <laughs> it's a number. <laughs> and where are you going? You know, I'm gonna tell you something. If y'all didn't see Jane, uh, <laughs> she could McQuinn Dickies. I didn't even know they was real, but the McQuinn Dickies, the McQuinn Dickie the was LeQuinn. a real mining corporation that people don't even understand. That <laughs> even though it was in this movie, <laughs> they played another part in history. The, see, <laughs> did y'all see Django? Y'all remember when Django? Trick that guy to give him his gun and he killed all of them. <laughs> See, uh, I'm just trying to tell you that's real. That's really the that's real war. That's yeah. really how you do the enemy. You got to oh, get man. their guns and then shoot them with it. He, he said, "Look, he said, hey, he, he's a nice fella." He said, hey. "Won't you let him have your your gun there?" He said, you know what? That's a good idea. <laughs> he said, "That's a good idea." He I said, just "I just had all the sight." <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. My man said, yeah, yeah. He said, perfect. Bow, bow. I'm and he like, said, it's a perfect weapon. He said, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to use it on you. You know. You got to, you got, man. <laughs> Django. <laughs> Two movies people need to go watch if your people's out there listening. Major Pain. You got to watch for the first part. And I'll tell you, it'll make sense. And then watch for your LaQuint Dickies. And Django. You got to watch out for those two types, types of people that's coming from branches of the military. Got to gotta watch them because, man, that and then society as a person is going to be how Django is. So just <laughs> be ready for that. That ain't going to be a slap on the wrist either. Well, let me tell you something. Um, 
we always want to give thanks and, and honor to the Father in heaven. And y'all can believe whatever you want to. That be your own business. And it's just cool to be able enough to deal with the different generations and to just see how younger people think because nobody's talking to younger people. And younger people are talking. They're yeah. telling us stuff. You know, but we we afraid to listen to them. I mean, we scared of Tupac and and we scared of J M and and, and we scared of Paolo and, and 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 Big Word and and, and Little Bird and and you know we tired of, we scared of all them guys, man. You know what's the guy, Little James uh, Wayne, him and 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 the guy little that catches James. the little guy that catches the cold all the time. He's always coughing and and and. Rest in peace, MXC. Uh, he was, you know, with the dog. DMX. All them guys, see? And they keep switching their names around. <laughs> well, I knew him. I knew him by that. I didn't know, you know, Prince when they called himself the artist. Oh, I knew them when, he, when we used to say, yo, man, get them girls. No, that's right. He wasn't wearing. We didn't skip that. Wearing women panties around this, the neighborhood, you know. Well, that's what he dreamt. That's what you see his first album. Man, you better leave Prince alone. That boy, that boy had on women panties. Uh, that first album, I'm trying to tell you. He was on that damn white horse. He was naked as hell. <laughs> he was pretty too. Uh oh. Okay. Well, he was pretty, but he he was on that white horse, man. <laughs> and uh, listen, no respect for him. I couldn't do it. I couldn't lay up on a white horse naked. Get all up on him, mom. Looking all, all up in the, you know, all up in the camera. <laughs> no, that scares me. Not really, but it should. <laughs> it definitely should. You talking about going into the stable, looking a horse in the eyes? No. No, 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 no. I'm talking about when you're riding them. You mm. need to, you need to look at that one thing I was telling you. Ooh, that's a, that's weird. I turn pink when I go over to him. When I come back here, I'm orange. We don't get it. We ain't changing it either. And we're going to keep subscribing a couple more times. We might change our shirts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Next time you see this video, it might be the same background, but... Well, see, topic. the whole thing is, all we want to do is talk about stuff that we want to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the McQuinn Dickies, is that who they name is? The McQuinn Dickies. Them, them guys. See, Django had got caught. And Miss Laura you know, was trying to figure out what to do with him. And Stephen, Stephen <laughs> kept suggesting stuff because he loved to see black folk get killed. Just Paris. Just loved to he see. He loved it. <laughs> you know what? We ought to go find Samuel Jackson right now and kick his ass. <laughs> For playing that part. Just for playing that part. Because, you know, he, too good. <laughs> and he knew he was playing a despicable man. He knew it. But he anyhow, played it too well. He played it good, too. Man, he, he was sitting back there, just. You know, them boys ain't here for no mandango. Yeah, yes, they, they here. Is. That he, yes, they <laughs> is, uh, Stephen. He said, they, they here for that girl. <laughs> he said, have you seen what any he, money? What he said? He said, the day ain't bought diddly. Okay. They ain't about diddly. That's right. He said, that. He said, have you seen any money? He said, no, then they ain't bought no man Nino. Thank you, Calvin. Yeah, thank you, Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said, thank you, Stephen. Yes, well, he said Calvin. that to him. So I said, thank you, Stephen. <laughs> he said, them guys here for that girl. Thank you, Stephen. You're welcome, Calvin. <laughs> he tried to give himself his own credit for that. Hey, man, that was a, that was a classic. Man, I'm going to lie. All of them played them parts. Everybody, you know that all. That's all part of casting, though. I mean, yeah. so you pick, you pick who's good for those parts. That's so then, let me ask you this: Then, if that's the case, getting back to the military, why does the military just pick anybody? Well, and then they change when they got uppity. They got real strict on who they pick before they just see anybody could come in. You know, if you if you got a pulse, they ain't bring come on in. You see, they didn't care if you were dumb. God. Boy, I'm going to tell you, I met some stupid people in the military. But what I'm saying is, and hell, they might have been turned around looking at me. Okay, same I'm trying thing. To think. What, war, what war was going on then? 
When? Between seven. You went in in seventy one. You came out in seventy what? Seventy (laughs) one. It's like. He said he went to orientation. They said, does anybody want to leave? Me? Excuse me? Yeah. Which way is the door? This way? We'll I, tell I see myself up. We'll tell that story on another day. But anyways, um, thank y'all for tuning in. It's just two brothers, man, just talking. We, and it's all it's about, man. I'm glad that the idea came across, well, his brain first, and then God gave me the, you know, just the grins, you know, just to be like, hey, do it. It's going to be it's going to be something that can come together. And first we figured let's have a script. But I think it'll be harder to read off a script than trying to come out with your own words to really express how you feel. And some things do have to be cleaned up sometimes, guys, but I feel like we can get our point across a little bit better than trying to sit down, read a script, and then it's more it's more authentic coming from us to the audience. You guys can feel it how we're feeling it and just be in the moment with us. And let me tell you something. Be careful. If you're going to feel anything, not like this. <laughs> Got to get you in jail. That'll send you to jail. You want to touch like this. Like, you know, uh, like, hey, get like hands off. Okay, there we go. I see, see you. this jail, this freedom. Tell them what? Jail, freedom. Tell them back up off me. Back up off of me. All now, if they just fall on you, get off me. I don't want nothing to do with I it. I better leave it right there, cause somebody I can I can hear, I can hear that whistle blowing now. So anyway, yeah, until we outside. until we see y'all the next time, y'all have a good day and enjoy and love somebody. Love everybody. No. Don't love everybody. Give love to everybody, but maybe they might all not deserve, it, but. Just, <laughs> At least show love to everybody. Let me say this to you. That ain't nothing but young people not understanding yet. Then it, y'all, then the 70s was a hippie fade, wasn't it? That was definitely. Peace, it. love, and acceptance. Okay. So. And sm- a lot of people sm- got gun the real back then, too. Well, we. we See, we passed a whole clinics, lot of stuff. Right? Clinics, condoms. We didn't have condoms back procedures. then. <clears throat> we didn't care about that because we were free loving. But the point is. That's the problem. Yeah, that was a problem. We free, free love, love. Well, free love, and, and rock and roll, and all that stuff. What I was saying about loving everybody, man. You can say you're gonna love everybody, <laughs> but you better just love a few cats because yeah, you get to spending your love. But you know, no, that's why I said show love. I think, I think I think you can love, show love, but I you can't give everybody love. No. Well, you got enough love to share. Just don't be in love with nobody like that. No, not no, everybody. Not, no, Only no, be in too, love with special Jesus. people. That would make my brain hurt, Jesus. My goodness. Hard to blow so, up. So, I think we covered the military pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, when I was in the military, you couldn't be gay and be in the military. They found out you was gay, they would kick you out. And also, a lady couldn't get pregnant while she was in the military. They made them give up their children. Yeah, they sent them home. Yeah. They sent them on leave. And they get to go home, have the baby, come back. Yeah, but they used to kick them out. I mean, that's crazy. This country is so crazy. That's why people like my man here be talking about, uh uh-uh. uh. That's <laughs> how to be part of that nonsense. <laughs> because it is crazy. But, anyways, y'all. I'm out of here. I got, I got something hey to go. Hey, guys, look. Peace, love. I got love. something to go do. Blessings. And we out of 5,000. I out of 5,000, baby.